Hey all, so we are checking back in with War 9 here, skipping over War 7 and 8 because that was right around when the announcement of the changes to the tactic uh, came out and my alliance had already decided to take the rest of the season off, as I mentioned in my previous video. Plus the fights just weren't that interesting, so I'm just not going to make videos for those two. But, um, as you can see here, we matched somebody significantly lower on the scale, and they left Kashala open. And I have not been able to use um, this most recent acquisition out of my champions just yet. And she was open, and uh, Elaine made sense. So here she is, and I'm going to be using her as much as I possibly can, right? So, first off, notice... Um, that I'm doing a pretty good job of holding on to her blessings here. I'm just always being mindful of when I can get the intercept because that is generally the hardest one to do safely and just watching for places to keep the others up, trying to keep the pause, but also knowing that against Maestro in particular, there's not really a whole lot I have to pay attention to as far as fight strategy. I'm just going to special twos because the special one won't do anything. And that keeps me far enough away that I don't really have to worry about the region anyway. This fight with Nick Fury, I'm definitely going to make some mistakes here, right? And mainly because I go for the intercepts too much. Now, Kushala is bleed immune, so it's not that risky doing that. And if I were taking this fight in, I would say in season, this is in season. If I were taking this fight during a season where we were actively pushing, I would definitely be using an invuln boost for stuff like that. But that is kind of the fun part about Kushala, is that if she gets intercepted, <laughs> it also benefits. And you saw that in spades right there, right? So I started out this fight intentionally dexing, knowing that it would cause an indestructible, because I wanted to hit into his block several times before I parried him. See, there we have another fun little surprise. But the important thing is to get those prowesses up and to reduce purifiability accuracy before you start parrying and keeping your um, Blessing of Wisdom active to then let you block unblockables. Because ideally you don't want them to go unblockable at all until you're ready for it. So I've definitely taken some damage I didn't need to in this fight. This is not my best play in this war, and also not her best matchup. But you can see that just staying on top of the tactic does mean that this is pretty much fine. Not having to worry about Nick's unblockable is pretty huge. You see here we are able to safely parry without worrying about um, the masochism, mainly because he's in second life, and therefore he cannot be stunned. But even if he wasn't, that would have been safe because we had so many prowess, and so he couldn't have purified it anyway. So at this point, we're just waiting to finish this out with this special right here. He is unblockable, and we can't block unblockables, which honestly means that, again, in a more serious season, what I should have done is back off, not throw in that special one, and parry it again to refresh um, my ability to block unblockable, then tried to finish him off. Would have been a little bit safer, but not really a big deal. We move on to section two here, and we have this gladiator fight. This is pretty simple. I'm going to push him to special two because although that is technically the more dangerous dex, it means that we bypass the unstoppable, and it's more dangerous because he applies incinerate through block, which Kashala is immune to. So the other thing to note about this node is that it has return policy, but one of the things to note is that that doesn't actually matter, and you are going to see me completely forget that in this fight. Because I'm just used to taking this as return policy, and so I was like, don't nullify, don't nullify, don't nullify, because I didn't have to nullify, because this is Kushala, and I can use my special two, as I do here, and do plenty of damage. However, between the prowess from the tactic and our blessing of power allowing us to further reduce ability power rate, I definitely could have made a point to uh, nullify and do a bunch of damage. But you also see that like the way this is working out, 
I'm not really intercepting Gladiator all that much. There weren't a ton of windows. I had a lower prowess count than in the previous two fights. And so the way I played it ultimately was safer. But I just wanted to call out that I could have technically done it the other way if I had really gone for it, hit into his block more to build that up. We could have. But in the moment, I just kind of stuck to my older habits, playing the node more conservatively. Works out fine. Here we have our first shocker fight against this apocalypse, and the big thing that we're focusing on here at the beginning is just getting rid of these prowess. He starts with at least one of them before we ever allow him to throw a special, um, because we don't want him to go unblockable. Now, I'm normally pretty darn good at Apocalypse's special 2 evade. Clearly not there. It's unfortunate, but that's okay. Here, he's going to gain a little bit of prowess as I block his special 1, which we expected, but that's completely okay. I don't throw the striker there because we do get lucky with the stun on the medium, and then we throw the striker, and here we go and throw the special 2 to close it out. All of those prowess he gained actually ramp us faster. We definitely could have done this without the second special one. Sometimes I like overkilling with Shocker because I'd much prefer it to the alternative. We're also pretty safe in removing the prowess from the node simply because um, the chance to remove them goes up as his charges go up and the prowess themselves feeds his charges. So I really wasn't worried about slow playing that fight because I knew I would have control as I went. Now, this Sasquatch I have not personally taken with Shocker before. I honestly haven't even seen a video of it because, again, we're not pushing right now. But I had been told that some of my friends at 4Loki have taken this fight. Thought about it for a second. I was like, yeah, that makes total sense because I've used Shocker on this exact node for Onslaught. Why would Sasquatch be any different? You just build to a big special two and close it out with the heavy, right? And so you will see me doing exactly that. Now I have a hundred of these charges. What I'm trying to do is keep him backed up, but not give him any more power, hoping that he goes into Wrath of Tanarak so that I can then safely throw this special two and not a special three and therefore land my heavy while he doesn't have protection up. That is going to require us to dance a little bit here, and it does mean that we could have ramped less because all of these prowess that he's picking up are giving us charges, except we're already at max, right? However, it does mean that we're able to throw this heavy with only one, two of those rage stacks, and so only a 10% protection. Now, given how much health he has left, even if we had thrown that perfectly at no stacks, it wouldn't have killed, right? This Sasquatch is, I'm pretty sure, rank 3, and just super, super beefy. Like, one of the largest characters in the game, right? But, kind of like we just talked about, we don't need to full ramp for this next one. He's going to continue to ramp us. We are just going to keep him in the corner until he goes into Wrath as much as possible. Because then, as soon as he calms down and we are able to stun him again, we'll throw our special two and we'll close this out. It doesn't matter if he heals, he's not going to heal over 40%, and we saw how much the last one did to him. We'll hit him periodically, doesn't matter if we trigger Mystic Dispersion. There we go, we throw the Relic, and now we know it's safe to throw this special two. Like we said, we're at 100 charges because the dupe gained us charges every time he gained a prowess, and this is going to be more than enough. So not as fast as a lot of Shocker fights, but very, very safe, as long as you are not scared of Sasquatch in Wrath. And much, much faster than doing it with Photon, which I've done way more times than I would like to. Anyway. We move on to Onslaught here, go ahead and heal up Shocker. Now honestly, I prefer Hulkling for this particular Onslaught fight, I think I would even prefer Havoc on this one, but I know Shocker can do it, and again, we don't really care about the outcome of this particular war, so this is a good time to use the third best option and see how it feels, right? The, the tricky part here is, of course, 
that he is more likely to get to two bars of power, his special two is spooky, and we are much, much more likely to get rooted because of just how incredibly long his special attack animations are. And then just having to block while rooted, whether we have a crush charge on us or not, is going to not be fun. And it's Onslaught, right? Onslaught hates throwing his specials. Something about his stupid medium and the space it creates just makes this less fun, right? I go ahead and I throw that ramping because I figure that I can handle that first bit with the reverse controls. The problem is I am out of practice then dexing the beams. Um, so yeah, I block them at a bad count on my uh, bubble shield because we've been rooted so much. I end up losing a fair amount of health to that degen as well as just the hit itself because I'm pretty sure it crit. Yeah, this is Onslaught. He's a jerk here. Like I said, I do prefer others that take a little bit less time to get where they need to be to close out this fight, but we are doing okay. We're close to high charges. We're on top of the, um, what you call it, the dexes, but we are very low on health, and so I'm going to go ahead and throw this here knowing that I have been able to kill a rank 3 onslaught from 100%, or not from 100%, from like 90% on the regen node, because that's where he was. So from half here, I wasn't worried. So yeah, I think the health that I ended at proves why I would prefer somebody else for that fight. <laughs> but it is what it is. I know I can do it, and I know ways to be a little bit safer next time. If I'm forced into it, I'll take it. We move on to Serpent here. This is the reason that I brought Odin. I think Kashala could do this fight without the ability to hit into the shock phase, simply because the tactic would allow her to hit into Serpent's block and control his power that way. But I actually haven't fought Serpent yet because my primary tactic attackers on the Mystic side that I have ranked up are Kushala, Hood, and Longshot. And Kushala's basically permaban, and Longshot and Hood both rely on Fate Seal, to which Serpent is immune. So this is the first time that I've actually fought with this particular combination of a character I built versus a character I built. So this was kind of cool for me. Um, one of the main reasons that I'm making this particular video you see that we start by parrying quite a bit. If we had been able to hit his block more, we would have. But the important thing is to parry. I am trying to parry the hits of his special one, but I'm not agonizing about it, right? It happens or it doesn't. And in that case, I was a little bit too late and I got hit. Eh, oh well. But you can see we are going for intercepts where we can. He just completely catches me off guard up close there. We do land a heavy. Uh, Kashala's extra ability accuracy for the parry mastery is coming in clutch against uh, insult to injury here. And so we are able to stay more on top of things. The important thing is that we are just keeping the prowess up and therefore keeping his ability power rate down. And so basically he's only gaining power as we're hitting him, whether he's inexorable or not. That means that we don't have to worry about him going to death immunity. He does heal a bit. We didn't fully shut it down with our SIG and all of our passives. But then he goes right back down and we don't have to worry. And that was my war. We did win this one. Um, this was an absolute blast for me. Like I said, first time I've been able to use my relatively new Kushala. Um, I did not pull her until she went into the basic. I had saved seven Abyss Nexuses for her. But it was worth it. I pulled her on the first and second of those seven. <laughs> Immediately maxed her out. And I am so pleased with her. This war was a blast. Um, I'm sure that she is going to be blacklisted in Tier 1 next season. I'll be sad about that. But... <laughs> Next time she lines up for fights, I'll look forward to using her. Anyway, hope y'all enjoyed this, and until next time, thank you so much for watching.
and take care.